Next question is from Hal Dunksty. Why do female CrossFitters usually have thicker waists? It's for the opposite reason that you think. Yes. So people think they have a thicker waist because they do CrossFit. It's they do CrossFit because they have thicker waists. Well, they're good at CrossFit. Well, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. So yeah. it's it's the opposite of what you would think. You would think like, oh my God, I look at all these CrossFitters. There, there's a bias, right? You get your looking at people that gravitate towards a sport because they're naturally good at yeah. it. If you have a good, solid base, good, strong obliques, you're going to be better at, at CrossFit. Yeah, you have to be careful with these types of assessments. Like mm. You could look at uh, Olympic swimmers. So watch the Olympics, and you're right. looking at the best swimmers in the world. And you may say to yourself, wow, swimming makes your chest uh, shallow, makes your wide, give you a wide back and long arms and short legs. So if I swim a lot, that's yeah. what I'm going to look like. No, that's not true. It's just that they, their genetics gave them a amazing body for swimming, and then they trained on top of it, um, and that's what made them uh, such high level. When you're looking at the female CrossFit champions, yes, they've developed their body through training. Yes, they've developed the muscles around the waist as well, obliques and, and their abs and their core, very, very strong, but they probably also naturally have thicker, stronger waists, and that's what gives them more of that stability. A super small, tiny waist... And by the way, having muscular defined obliques and abs looks really good. It shows that you have good stability and strength. It doesn't look bad, but sometimes we have these ideals, right? We look at models or whatever, and they're supposed to have these like impossibly tiny waists. Mm -hmm. in, in sports or in movement, that's a detriment. You have a tiny little wispy waist, yeah. and you're going to go and you're do- You're susceptible for injury. Oh, you're going to hurt your spine. You're not going to deadlift much. You can't overhead press much. You can't twist very well, so- um, it's a bit of a detriment. So that's actually what you're seeing. What you're seeing is a bias towards people who compete at a high level. And then on top of it, they also develop their bodies through lots of training. They probably have tremendous muscle building genetics. So they don't just have thick muscular waist. They have thick muscular backs and shoulders and quads and hamstrings and glutes and all that stuff uh, because they're at the top level. Now, if you take the average person and they ate right and you train them to compete in CrossFit, they're just going to get fit. They're going to get really fit. They're not going to get big waist. They're going to get leaner, um, and you'll see more definition. But it's not due to the training. This reminds me of the myth like you know, deadlifts and squats makes your waist big, so don't, don't do them. I mean, it's silly. It's all, Really, if you want your waist to be small, just get lean. Uh, body fat takes up so much more space. You could drop inches off your waist by getting lean, and then you could build the shit out of your core, and you might gain a quarter of an inch around your waist. So you lost five inches from fat and you gained a quarter of an inch of muscle. Uh, sounds like an amazing trade-off, uh, if you ask me. Plus, it's more defined uh, and you're, you're, you look a lot better and you're healthier. 